Vet Talk Radio is proudly supported by the Animal Referral Hospital. This week... We got him back. We rescued him in January this year in the most appalling condition that you could imagine a dog to be in, which was caused from a flea infestation. Poor dog. But what a difference decent food, TLC and most importantly, proper flea treatments can make. Well, Teddy's definitely a diamond in the rough, but uh, with each passing week we see that he gets shinier and shinier. Plus, how clean are your hands? Soap and water? Uh, that's all I would recommend initially. I, you know, I think you can overdo all of the uh, antibacterial treatments that people use at home. The secret to knocking off nasty bugs comes from National Hand Washing Day. Meow! An Aussie vet scores international recognition for her book, Cats Revealed. You might be the human whisperer besides a cat whisperer because I'm looking into your eyes with your glasses. I'm feeling like I'm being hypnotized by this message. <laughs> and, uh, 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 chew! This is the wattle, the emblem of our land. You can stick it in a bottle, you can hold it in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Hay fever season, painful for pets and people, but there's new hope. I certainly hope so. Hi, I'm Brian Pickering. Hello, and I'm Kay Brown. All those stories and more right here on Vet Talk Radio. And look, if this is your first time listening, welcome. We record a new show live every Saturday and upload it to vettalkradio.com.au or simply go and like our Facebook page to keep updated. And now, before we get to this week's stories, KB, what's happening in the world of news for our pets and other animals? Mm, Our court case in South Australia has highlighted the worsening obesity crisis affecting increasing numbers of pets. Uh, The RSPCA there is prosecuting an elderly adult couple for letting their dog get too fat and not getting it to a vet for obesity treatment. The couple have told an Adelaide court that they loved their 13-year-old German shepherd but claimed she was too heavy to lift nor could they afford for her to be transported to a vet. However, the RSPCA claims its inspectors actually had to seize the dog after discovering she'd been unable to stand up for a month, uh, during which time she lay in her own urine and faeces, which burned her skin. The association alleges the owners repeatedly refused veterinary care, resulting in the dog ultimately being euthanised and the owners facing charges of ill treatment. Well, I, I should think so. That's pretty bad. Why do people let their animals get so fat? I don't know. It's a condition, isn't it? It must be a mental condition, surely. I'm not sure, but um, something to keep in mind. Mm. And um, while we keep things in mind, there's a timely reminder to check the batteries in your fire alarm after a family of nine people narrowly escaped a house fire in Queensland, in Logan, in fact. However, their much-loved little Maltese, called Casper, didn't make it out. Mm. He succumbed to smoke inhalation, so... Check those batteries. Absolutely. I'm I'm actually going to do that as soon as we finish this show. (laughs) Good. Well, on a lighter note, Facebook has jumped on the why not dress up the dog with a crazy costume for Halloween (laughs) a little bit earlier this year with a decidedly different dog mask going viral with close to a million hits. That's a lot of hits. (laughs) The item that's grabbed their fancy is a plastic muzzle which covers the dog's face with what looks like a terrifying werewolf muzzle complete with blood-covered fangs. I saw that. I I didn't know what to make of it at first. (laughs) Well, apparently the werewolf muzzle was designed in Russia. Uh, It comes in all sizes, uh, including right down to chihuahuas, Mm -hmm. um, and it sells for around 50 bucks. Right. I can um, see a lot of those yeah. uh, popping up everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What else you got? Well, for my money, I think I'd rather have one of the latest in wearable technology for pets. It's a collar which not only tracks your pet's location, but it can also check for fever, monitor the pet's pulse and respiration, and even indicate if your pet is in pain. Um, any irregularities, send a notice by phone, text or email to the owner or to a vet if the owner has rented the smart collar um, for a pet recovering from surgery, for example. Now, there are two companies making the smart collars in the US, Pet Pace and Voice, that's with a Y, not an I. <laughs> Alas, neither is available here. Not yet, I, anyway. They probably, they probably will come. Look, it's a very good idea, and I think it's great to be able to tell where your pet is and perhaps what they're doing. Are they lounging around? Are they annoying the neighbour's dog or cat or whatever? So, well, yeah. even better if it's in pain or if yeah. it's... For example, um, our dog Matisse used to have seizures. I'd like to know if there was some irregularity yeah. that could tip us off yep. as to when he was about to have a seizure. Then you can get the uh, medication 
communication in Absolutely. advance. Absolutely. But all those things aside, um, you really do need legally. In fact, uh, you need a, um, a tag, an ID tag. And what yep. better one than boomerangid.com.au. It's a good this one. This important informative interlude brought to you by, by us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, KB. Well, look, we all love feel-good stories, and this one is among the best. Basically, it's about a purebred staffie named Jet. And unfortunately, Jet ended up in the wrong hands, and he was abused through neglect. Mm. So let's have a listen to Jet's breeder, vet nurse Kylie Snurling, as she takes up the story. Uh, so Jet was a, um, a dog that was homed with someone in Queensland, and he was neglected and, and abused, unfortunately. We got him back. We rescued him in January this year in the most appalling condition that you could imagine um, a dog to be in which was caused from uh, a flea infestation and uh, just a severe secondary bacterial infection. Surgical vet nurse Kylie Snurling breeds award-winning staffies, which regularly take out top prize in dog shows. Having nursed Jet back to health, she was determined to find him the perfect home. Unfortunately, I can't keep him myself. I already have too many dogs at home and he needs to be the centre of attention to, to someone. And by the looks of it, Jet seems to have done just that, including getting a brand new name. Yes, his name is now Teddy. you Teddy. How did yes. you get Teddy? Well, I think um, he reminds us of a bear with his round face and his black eyes. <laughs> So, yeah, Teddy. <laughs> Judging by his smile, Teddy might yeah, be just as boy. happy with his new pet parents as they are with oh. him. Uh, we take Teddy to dog training um, obedience class every Sunday mm -hmm. at 3 o'clock. And how's he doing? He's doing very well in class, but he does better at home. Okay. He, he doesn't really focus in class, <laughs> but he's learning. <laughs> so what do May and Max really think of Teddy? Well, Teddy's definitely a diamond in the rough. But uh, with each passing week, we see that he gets shinier and shinier. So um, that's rewarding. The Charles, he couldn't settle for the first two weeks. Yep. He would just run around and chew up everything. Yeah. And he thinks destroying things impresses us. <laughs> impresses us for some reason. So look at me, look at me, Teddy the Destroyer. But he's okay. really good now. Well, he's only a pup, isn't he? How old is he? he? Is. He's um, three and a half. Three and a half. Okay, well, yes. he's, not, he's not a puppy puppy. So, yeah, it's about <laughs> no, time he started to learn. <laughs> no, it was just the first two weeks and now he's it's been two months and he's really great what a great story. That was uh, May Class, or Class? Class, I think it is. And she is a very classy lady, uh, who, along with her husband, Max, have not only given Jet a new name, they've given Teddy a new loving forever home. What do you think of that? Oh, I love that. I love happy endings. It's a happy you know that. Yeah. Have you washed your hands today? Of course you have. Everyone washes their hands with soap and water several times per day, right? Mm -mm. <laughs> Apparently, not only are most of us not washing our hands often enough, we're also doing it all wrong, which is why Australia's inaugural September 4 National Hand Washing Day was born. Actually, here at Vet Talk Radio, we're impressed they were able to organise this event so quickly because clearly they were listening to us last week when one of the best scrubbers we know, surgical specialist Dr Sarah Goldsmith, demonstrated the correct way to sterilise your hands before an operation. You can't say that about Dr Sarah. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> <laughs> OK, go on. So maybe she won't hear it. <laughs> if you didn't hear that, then you can check out last week's show on vettalkradio.com.au. But for the rest of us, the Good people at the child's rights company Plan International Australia have come up with some to-dos to minimise the chance of spreading gastro, flu and even the common cold. They've already taught kids in Africa how to do it. Now it's our turn. Well, Aussie kids can learn to do exactly the same thing, can they? I would hope, I so. hope so. And maybe some of the big kids as well. <laughs> OK, hint, hint. OK, and uh, let's not forget our furry pals can catch certain bugs from us and vice versa, which is why we're in fact doing the story. Now, there are actually, according to plan, seven steps to washing your hands properly. Uh, we'll condense these down for the time being. And uh, it does sound simple enough, but when you see the how-to chart on our Facebook page, you'll see that none of us actually washes our hands properly. Okay. Okay, here's what they say to do. Number one, start with wetting your hands, add soap, Brian does the sound effects, and then rub until the soap's bubbly. Then begin rubbing the back of both your hands. After that, start interlacing your fingers and rubbing your hands together. 
Next, rub your thumbs between your index finger and thumb of both hands. I'm not sure about those effects. Rub your fingertips then on your palm. And finally, rub both wrists. You've probably got the idea by now. I certainly think they know how noisy it is. I ran out of sound effects. I haven't, I haven't got all the right ah, ones. <laughs> I was trying to wave. Anyway, remember to rinse your hands as well and dry them with a clean towel. And then flick them on the wall. <laughs> yes, well, that's what you do. Um, even though there is invariably a clean right. towel. We don't have any of those fancy uh, air dryers. Maybe if we had one of those, you'd use it. Um, and don't forget to, to wash your hands lots if you're out in the um, in, in public areas, you know, yeah. pubs, restaurants, oh, shopping yeah. centres. You know, and don't touch the door handle when you go out. It's like, ugh. Ah, well, yes. That's the thing. After you've washed your hands, yeah, after yeah, you've been to yeah, the toilet, yeah. don't just twiddle yeah, get, your fingers under the running water. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Grab uh, an extra bit of paper, use that to open the door handle. So if you would like to encourage the rest of the family and or any guests in your home to help stop the spread of germs, you can also go to Plan Australia's website and download a handy mini poster. It's at all the W's, plan.org.au forward slash hand washing. Okay, well, well known Sydney vet Dr. Kim Kendall is known as the cat vet here in Sydney, and I actually like to call her the cat lady because she loves surrounding herself with all these moggies. Anyway, she's written a brand new book. It's a really good book, actually, for cat lovers called Cats Revealed, and we managed to get none other than America's favourite vet, Dr. Marty Becker, to talk to Dr. Kim about her new book. You know what, Harry, I'm in Australia holding a very special book. My name's even on the front of this. And I got to tell you, Kim, I've known you for a lot of years. You're on the Fear Free Advisory panel, so you're one of two people from Australia that are helping us you know, bring Fear Free Veterinary visits to dogs and cats. But tell me about how you started this book. Well, the book started as a, an education, education tool for my uh, clients. Mm -hmm. So it's a collection of newsletters that I basically wrote over mm -hmm. the last uh, 15 years or so, and we've now collated all the mm -hmm. information. It's answering the questions that the owners ask or leave unasked but really want answered. So it's a lot about behavior. It's a lot about uh, what I call the uh, human-cat dyad. That yeah. it's, it's how humans... How cats relate to humans and how the humans need to adapt more than the cats. If you were uh, to narrow it down to the top two things that cat owners do wrong, that they do wrong, that you wish every cat owner did right for their cat, what would it be? The first would be to make the carrier, just, you know, you start with kittens and even adult cats, and I have them go be put in and out of the carrier mm -hmm. for no reason. Right. So it's just not a big deal. And there are assorted ways to get started with that. Mm -hmm. And familiarity cr creates contentment, not contempt. In a cat mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. familiarity and consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just don't give up when the going gets rough. The cat will often resist, but then they recognize that resistance is futile. And they'll give so, so the carrier is comfort then. They, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a containment. It's, it's, it's just there. It's safety. And so then what's the second thing? That you and the do? second thing I'd really like owners to do is to learn to clip their cat's nails. I mm -hmm. know it's terrifying, mm -hmm. and I will do it for them, uh, mm -hmm. but if you can clip a cat's nails and give it a pill, mm -hmm. then those seems to be the two things that give the cat's confidence in the owner that the owner can do the right thing for it. Mm -hmm. And the cats just relax when they need regular medication, mm -hmm. and there's an enormous difference between a cat that'll take a pill mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. long term that will help it and the mm -hmm. cat who won't take a pill at all and, then, and that leaves me with no options for treatment quite often. You might be the human whisperer besides a cat whisperer because I'm looking into your eyes with your glasses I'm feeling like I'm being hypnotized by this <laughs> message but I absolutely love it so one final question what's, some, what's something that cat owners worry about too much? There's always something that they don't worry enough about let's say a cat that's drinking more water or not eating food What's something that, from the book that maybe a cat owner worries too much about? I think we worry too much about worming cats these mm -hmm. days because mm -hmm. uh, the cats are better fed mm -hmm. and the wormer products are a lot mm -hmm. more effective. So I think uh, leading on from that, mm -hmm. it's, it's what diseases can a cat give people. Mm -hmm. There's really not that many because mm -hmm. if there were, I'd be covered in it. Right. That's a good point. You very seldom hear or absolutely never hear about veterinarians becoming sick from 
zoonotic disease is very, very, very rare. So I would say for somebody that's getting a first cat, you know, for the first time, or you're getting another cat, a lot of times you get into bad habits and you think this is the right way to do it. So this will get you off on a fresh, good start. And for those of you that already have cats, this is going to help you even return even more of a portion of what you owe them for the unconditional love and affection that they give you. So I highly recommend this book. It's not only on my bookshelf, it's one that I recommend for new cat owners and for veterinary health care professionals. And that was Drs. Marty Becker and Dr. Kim Kendall. Um, sounds really fantastic. I've actually got a copy of the book in my hand here, and it's got lots of great stuff in it. Uh, you can also get Dr. Kim's tips as well at felinefriendlycare.com. But uh, do grab the book because it's really, really neat. And there is a digital version as well that you can get if you don't want a hard copy. It was a pretty good uh, recommendation from Dr. Marty, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, whew, that must have cost impressive. a lot. <laughs> yeah. And he did the foreword for the book, but uh, they've known each other. Years. Uh, 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 <laughs> well, it looks like spring sprung. <laughs> but do our pets suffer from the same kind of spring allergies that we do? Well, who better to ask than ARH clinical dermatologist Dr. Danny Houlihan? Yeah, so um, in spring and summer, we tend to see a flare up of what we call atopic dermatitis or environmental allergies. So that's allergies to pollens, molds, and dust mites. Um, and that can be a year round allergy, but typically the dogs that are um, sensitive to pollens are going to flare up in spring and summer. Um, and so when they flare up, they tend to get extremely itchy. Um, um, which can be uncomfortable for both the dog and the owner. Say good day to Twitch, a three-year-old boxer cross who suffered environmental and food allergies so severely that her owner, Kate Dawes, seriously considered putting her down to end the pain and suffering. She had rash on her belly, a very red, angry rash. She was running around the house scratching herself on furniture, the carpet, the walls. Anything she could scratch on and again we ended up at the emergency vet so that they could uh, settle her down enough to sleep and they said look this is a very bad allergic reaction it's probably atopic so environmental you need to take it to a specialist and that sent us to Danny Houlihan at ARH and began quite a long journey. Got an itchy pet? Kate Dawes has some good advice. I'll get them straight to the vet. Um, I think about, you know, how much time I wasted and money on ridiculous creams trying to help her. And the answer is so simple and so effective once you get them to the dermatologist and you have the right creams and potions, I call them. Um, and her quality of life has gone from, you know, I was watching her thinking, I can't let her keep suffering this way, to a very happy, calm dog. So, yes, get them to the vet. Don't wait. That was uh, pretty good advice there from Twitch's mum, Kate Dawes. Get your pet to the vet sooner rather than later. It will save you money in the long run and your pets won't suffer. What do you reckon? Definitely. We've had an itchy little girl, but she's really good now. <laughs> good on you. Thanks to Dr. Danny. OK, next week, what have we got, KB? It looks like dogs are finally making it into the mainstream spotlight insofar as human health goes. Researchers at the University of Sydney's Charles Perkins Centre hope to shed light on not only how dog ownership influences human health, but also on how these benefits could be harnessed as part of the healthcare system. Sounds like a great idea. Look, that's all for this week. Thank you very much for joining us. And don't forget to check out more of our video and audio stories and weekly podcasts, which you can access on vettalkradio.com.au. See you next time. Bye. Bye.